Alright, welcome back guys, everybody. Welcome to another podcast. This is the last one for season one. Um, and we have had our final round last Sunday. It's been absolutely amazing. All divisions absolutely blowing up in their last games. Um, all teams really playing well. But most importantly, we finally got ourselves a winner for season one from the Zebra Rivals. And it is once again actually Plaps pulling out the victory in the very last game against Surf Slayer. A uh, very hype matchup uh, before it started. And it actually proved to be a very, very good match. Uh, it was really close. The last game had to decide it all. Um, close fights, I think, for Surf Slayer especially. And um, we are lucky enough to get Temple Shield and Dunkle as well into the podcast. So welcome, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us again, man. Yeah, yeah. It's good to have you get back again. Um, Dunkle, it's your first time. Temple Shield, you've been here before, so you know how it goes. Um, we'll just be chatting away and see where we end up. Uh, and also, Corto, of course. Oh, Good to have yeah. you back on, on here as well. Uh, you did some casting again. Did you have fun? Yeah, uh, I catch uh, the Argonos match. Uh, it's logical. Mm -hmm. And I see after the, um, the second match of uh, Rustic Division. Just let me one second. It was Pale Owl School vs uh, Wild Blood. So I catch these two match. And uh, after I catch Triarchy vs Love and Devotion and Baguette Matcher vs Chocolate. Yeah. And, uh, for the match, I uh, I see in replay uh, um, Sir Slayer vs Pond Guard because it was very very good match and we have we can say all uh, a lot of things on this on this match. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it will be good. Uh, I actually casted the first game of the feudal division and then a little bit from the second, and then I also did uh, the tiebreaker for Crypta and uh, Wildblood, which was really fun on like on the Gloire. It was the only tiebreaker this weekend, uh, luckily, because there were already so many games. Um, but that one was really good as well. Crypta really playing convincingly there, so that was good. Um, before we do all that, Temple Shot, we know you a little bit. At least I think we do from the last, last podcast. And anyone who doesn't know you is, I don't know, has been living under as a rock or something. <laughs> uh, but Dunkel, uh, I would definitely want to go to you. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you the, the honors for reacting to uh, a few things that I'll be saying. And just first right. reactions, anything you want. All right, you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Surf Slayers. Really good team. Mm -mm. All right, Temple Shot as team captain. Just wow. <laughs> Missing a lot, but just wow. <laughs> just wow. All right, fair, fair game, fair <laughs> game. <laughs> um, and I gotta give you this one. Um, jacked. Or not jacked. No, no, no. Let's make it specific. Header. Header. A really nice guy, sometimes retarded, but in general, yeah, you got, like you this got his guy. Name wrong. It's not header, it's deader. Header. Oh, I'm so yeah, sorry okay, there. Well. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only thing you should have said better. That's it. <laughs> I like yeah. this guy. Great. I mean, he, he doesn't, have depth, doesn't have that much time because of work and stuff, mm -hmm. I realize, for the team, but he built up really good with sloth blockers in the feudal division. So, yeah. props. Yeah, absolutely true. I mean, despite all the, the banter going at him, um, he's actually built a very. <laughs> I think consistent team in a short amount of time and there were a lot of pressure because everybody was like putting pressure on that team to not perform. Yeah. So yeah, very impressive there. Um, they'll be going to the Rustic Division though for like the second division for next season, um, ending up with the last place in the Fuel Division, but still they they, they, they played some great games also in the last. I uh, imagine they'll be top of the division percent. next season. Yeah, they <laughs> might be. Yeah, if they continue to scrim like they, they do right now, then yeah. Yeah, I would say top two they would be in next season, I would mm -hmm. thought. I, I don't need to actually look at what other teams are in there, but I would, I would have said so mm -hmm. from how they're performing now, as long as they carry on how they're performing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but before we talk about the first place for next season, uh, let's actually talk about your first place, uh, guys, because that's what really matters today. Um, Temple Shell Dunkel, uh, any of you wants to take it, but just talk to me about the, the preparation for the match, the match itself, Surf Slayer. You can start off anywhere. I mean, we had a lot of scrims in the week leading up to it that I missed most of because I had to travel for work, unfortunately. So. Yeah, you missed all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was going to be there for the last one until our, until our team were fighting cancer. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, like in so general, I there for any yeah. scrims, but... we had, I think, six scrim partners for the entire week. Two of them cancelled, so we had four in total. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, Temple was a non. <laughs> <laughs> it was most likely, like it was always me or Manu leading or some people like that. We tried to different splits. Worked really good. In the beginning, we tried some cheesy stuff, let's say. It mm -hmm. didn't work out that good, therefore we changed our strat and it worked really good. Like in, like as you saw on, in, on Sunday, like on Sunday in, against Surf Slayer. 
Yeah, it definitely did work really good. Um, did you do anything specific uh, going into the match against your Slayer? Uh, the only specific thing is like what we are doing, not like usually not doing in CB Rivals round is before the match starts, like on Sunday before the match started, we went into a custom lobby together to like train all positions, who is going where, who is trapping where, who is doing this and stuff like that. This is one thing what we are usually not doing mm -hmm. um, before a match, but this is the only specific thing we did. Mm -hmm. Anything else was the same like in all games we mm -hmm. did. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, good, good there. Um, also, the map, I think, was really interesting, at least to me, because um, you guys played on it for the CBL um, as well against each other, which Sure Slayer won in the end. And the Harbor City was actually, I think, the game where you guys actually probably should have won it, but they won the, was it the defense, I think? Yeah, they, they got the defense by just a little bit on Harbor City. And it actually yeah, they got was kind of a turning out. point in the, in, uh, yeah. in, in, yeah. in, in the match there as well, uh, if you remember. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, this map is it's it's a different. Well, it's an interesting map. It's quite mm -hmm. a good map, also for our It's so open, but it is it is very attacker favored. This map, um, more so in rivals because you can make a lot more plays with the death limits on there. Mm -hmm. um, so in CBL, it's not. It's a bit more balanced in CBL because you can't be as aggressive on the attack. Let's say you can't take the, the trades. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a fun map, but at the same time, it's an awful to play. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kill the defender anyway. I mean, you saw from our game when you have two of the top teams playing against it, the attacks look very one sided in both games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mainly it, because of the, the tread position, the fact you can rotate so easily and spawn so far away for the for the mm -hmm. defenders as well. Like, there's, there's so many different var variables that will make it quite attack favored. Yes, absolutely. And also, if, if we go more specifically to the match itself, then um, something that we saw from last season was also that uh, I think even Thrust players were one of the first, or were you? I'm not even sure. We were actually defending the second supply, so the one on the on the left side of the of the map, um, like on a line in front of the base. Is is that something yeah. that was even considered in the scrims for you guys? Yeah. So that's something that we did last season. Um, mm -hmm. And then a lot of teams scrimmed against us and did the same thing. Yeah. I don't know about Surf players, they may have just thought the same thing as well as us, I can't remember, but it was definitely something that we decided last time to try mm -hmm. um, in last season, and it worked well last season. We changed it a bit this time. I don't think it worked quite as well this time because mm -hmm. we were a bit too grouped up on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. So you can see we lost control of the left respy quite quickly when they pushed yeah. because they got really they got some really nice trebs off. They had, um, I think Mask was on Shenji's that got a, a lot of good clearing there as well, mm -hmm. and we just got caught a little bit out of position. Um, but I think one of their traps killed like 80 units or something ridiculous like that. Yeah. Because um, we just got caught in a bad position, basically. Mm -hmm. um, it was a nice rotation from them. We just couldn't quite answer it because we weren't in the right position in the right time, basically. Yeah, exactly. Um, whereas if you look at the previous season, I think we had a small group that was sat on the supply itself the whole time. Um, that would mm -hmm. try and hold them in that choke. So it's little, little things like that. But yeah, again, you learn from it. If it doesn't work, you learn from it, you get better next time. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and um, the rotations yeah. were very big in the game. Like, what were the comms like, when, especially on, even on the A point where Surf Slayer actually got into into the, inside the gate, went back, uh, like, up to the left ladders or the staircases and then really used the traps, I mean, like, so well. It, it's an interesting one because that was the strat we were going to be using as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we were a little bit more cheesy with it. I'm not going to go into it now because hopefully we'll do it next season and catch the <laughs> off guard. So I was a bit, I was a bit gutted that they sallied out because it ruined our plans. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when they pushed through the gate, we we were, we were kind of expecting it, but we had a few people out of position because I think they weren't people weren't expecting it either. So a few too many of us rotated over to the right hand side of the map. Mm -hmm. So when they came to the left side, I think we only had three or four people in the position, whereas there should have been more. Um, mm -hmm. So again, small mistake from us. They capitalized on it. That's why we're such. You know, top teams, you find that little mm -hmm. error that the enemy makes and you punish it. Um, we still traded fairly evenly on A. We killed a lot of their specialist units, but like I say, they just out rotated us after that. So comms were still fairly messy, because like I said before, our comms are horrendous. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of noise. Well, I say that. It's a lot of noise, but it is useful noise. Yep. And the team is used to that, and they can deal with that, and they work very well with that. But if you came and joined the comms, like in the middle of a, of a fight, you'd be like, what the hell is going on because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just everyone talking at the same time so like nice. everyone picks out all the key bits of information that they that they mm -hmm. need so and then obviously there's myself or Dunkle making the big calls over the top that people will listen to so yeah messy but yeah it was still fine mm -hmm. we weren't expecting them to go full gate we were expecting more just like a tower push or some kind of cheese at the start because they had everything to do basically you know they had to win both games to be yeah, able exactly. to take the lead so we knew they were going to try some cheesy stuff which is why for the defense we expected a sally um, for our for their defense, sorry, mm -hmm. because as soon as they won that first game, they had to win the second one. And 
it's such a hard map to defend like mm-hmm. effectively against a good team so we half expected us alleys so we, we were ready for it anyway and yeah. then of course we spawned in instantly saw i think six or seven jab cab like fuck mm-hmm. it's a sally everyone runs to the gate <laughs> um and then they opened the gate for us which is a, a nice surprise so we pushed in through the gate then and got control which was nice yeah um, yeah that was a freebie yeah. there for sure and so um actually how how much do you think i mean we should be asking service like this but how much do you think the fact that the matchup in that they had to win that first game um and you guys had to like yeah, the, the possibility to get the second game attack, which, as you say, is pretty favorable to close it out at the, at the last game. But that also meant that pressure was on you on the second game, of course. Oh, yeah, 100%. Especially if you look at historically when we have lost a game. So, mm-hmm. for example, the last CBL, yep. when Thursday has then won that first game again. I think, what, we were, were we were 3-0 up, I think, and then they turned it around, or 2-0 up, yep, and they, exactly. they won the next game. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Historically, our team does crumble a bit under that when we when we lose a round. Um, it hasn't happened for a while, so I can't say it'd be the same thing now because it's a bit of a different team. But historically, that was always the case. So when we lost that defense, I was part of my in, uh, intern. I was like, "Fuck, what if you throw this now?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was trying to keep everyone in good mentality, keep mm-hmm. everyone all built up for the next one, because we didn't have as much pressure, like you said. Like we did put more focus on the defense, um, so it was a little bit disappointing we lost it so easily on that second push because they they did just outplay us. You know, it's fair play to them. Um, but yeah, then for the attack, I, I wasn't too worried about it because the map is attacker favorite. But at the same time, I was like internally screaming. <laughs> <laughs> and we had we had to swap our entire plan because like okay, we kind of expected a Sally, but like when we saw the sallying and our gate was like our server was kind of rushed towards the gate, and then we had completely flip around everything because we didn't <laughs> expect them to take A with our gate push towards right and then clear all the cap. It was completely different. And then that we spawned on the side gate was not that planned as well. It was basically completely spontaneous, mm-hmm. but it worked. <laughs> and we won in the end. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I, rotations. yeah, yeah, the rotation were key to the yeah. one. Yeah, and, and that is something uh, that I, I think more people have noticed it for sure. But uh, you see with the not so good teams that they have a very strict plan. And if they cannot execute that plan, they will lose the game. But you could see, especially with you guys, your Slayer, no beaches as well, um, that you guys are able to adapt very quickly within the game itself. And um, the obvious answer would be, or question would be, does that come from scrimming? Or is that, is that, is that something else inside um, the game as well? For me, it's just down to the experience of the team. I mean, mm-hmm. when you look at it, we have the longest running consistent team. Now, you could argue Surf stays the same, but their team has changed quite dramatically since the start. Whereas yeah. the thing I find interesting for rivals is we have made like zero changes every season mm-hmm. we made we added a couple of people for the second season but we have we've never like added people in mid-season we don't have a lot of changes whereas you see mm-hmm. with a lot of the other teams they're changing like one or two people every week yeah or more which has I a massive say. impact yeah. on your team mm-hmm. yeah or more in some cases so the fact that we've had this consistent pretty much same team mm-hmm. for well however long now we've had it since well the last quarter i guess and yeah. to some extent the last cbl as well that is what makes us such a strong team for me mm-hmm. we have that experience we've all played in a very intense environment together we all know how it works and we, we have a lot of good experience on the maps yeah. you know, we played this map last season as well with the cb rivals we played it in cbl we have a lot of ideas of how to attack and defend these maps so a lot of it comes from that in the scrims we tend to just do one plan and we'll say right let's try this plan see if it works if it doesn't work we'll try something else but if it does work then we try and tweak and refine that to get it as good as possible mm-hmm. so we don't have like for example just going back to your point we don't have a lot of plans like oh well, if they do this we'll do this if they do mm-hmm. this we'll do this it's just sort of we know how the maps work. We have a lot of experience from sieges and tournaments, everything really from the whole game for, for years now. Um, and it's just having that knowledge and being able to just trust in your team as well. You say, right, we're going to push this instead. Everyone goes and does that. Mm-hmm. We just quickly pull out rotations, pick out a couple of names to go do certain things. Like people can do that very quickly and, and get those rotations off because they can trust in the rest of the team as well mm-hmm. that they're going to do their job. So yeah. I think mainly it's just down to experience. Yeah, exactly. To be honest, I'm like, yeah. yeah, interesting. And, and, and then also the, the other thing that I've been thinking a lot about lately is um, you can clearly see that there's a few roles in a team uh, that, that I think teams are, are using. Maybe not um, that they talk about it specifically, but I wonder if you do. Um, it is that you always have someone who you could call a runner going for the supply going or going for specialist units just in the back, like just abandoning everything else. You've got a couple of guys that are like frontliners. You've got a couple of specialist guys. You've got some flankers. It's, is there like um, yeah? Do you actively call out players to take um, a role in in, in oh, the team? It's always yeah, depends yes on and that. no. Yeah. yeah, 
Like the thing is, for instance, last season I think it was on Sun City where we sell it against Sephos, we have special people who we are calling like, okay, Java, you will immediately run towards the supply and block it as soon as you can, ignore everything. Some stuff like that. But in mm -hmm. other games, we are not doing it. It always depends on our strategy and our map, what we are calling out, who has special roles. Like the only roles we have is like a flank group or like a, or like players who are always like defending special units or playing special units like Shenji, Falcos, Flames, Kokos and stuff like that. Yeah, it always depends. And, and mm -hmm. like I say, it doesn't really get called out in the in the match. So we will have some people special will sort of say, look, your job on this push is to cover the back. You do not leave that back position. Or it's when we're doing the push, we'll quit because it might, you know, especially mm -hmm. in this um, attack and defense we have in this map, we got pulled out of position a lot, or we pushed away we weren't planning to. So it would be on the fly, you know, just press tab, see who's got forty, say right, you you're covering the back, and you can trust that, that person will do it because we've all mm -hmm. had that experience with them. So for example, when we were pushing. I think it was when we were pushing the resupply on the left-hand side, we had um, Balthazar covering from their spawn. So they had a whole unit of cataphracts coming. He calls it out. Me and him instantly jump on it and ult the units together. Two long swords. Mm -hmm. You think, ah, they can't do much. But the long sword ult, we stopped all that cap coming through. Completely useless cap then. Then we wiped it. You know, it's things like that. You know you can rely on these people. And they don't have to have that job from the start. You can just call it out mid-fight and they will do it. Yeah, exactly. And I think that it's it's funny because I, I know that um, from the from from the general chat, um, I'm I'm looking it up now. You can see it as well. But um, there was somewhere where the the surf slayer team said a similar thing. Yeah, here it is. Uh, they said Saigo uh, or something. I think it was a player from there, right? Um, that oh, there did... was no bitches. I think. No, was no bitches. Oh, okay, well. I'm not similar. sure. Or yeah. What do you mean, like the Saigo thing or what? Yeah, yeah, the Saigo. Is is he from No Beaches? I don't know. I'm not I sure, but that's the thing. Like, there's there's always a few players within a team who get yelled on by their team captains, right, for going somewhere and not doing it, maybe. But yeah. Yeah. And... Yeah. I mean, you, you can have that in, mm -hmm. in some of the other teams. For us, I think there is. I don't think there's really ever been a time in a live match where I've had to call out someone for going the wrong way. Mm -hmm. In scrims, sure, because like I say, historically my team hasn't been the best in scrims because they kind of dick around a bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but in live games, everyone is <laughs> so hard focused. Like everyone knows what job they have and everyone knows what mm -hmm. they need to do because it's been drilled into us from however long we've been doing this for. Yeah. So I very, very rarely had to scream at someone in a live game. I think maybe in like the first CB Rivals on like one of the maps I had to mm -hmm. do it or something, I can't remember where someone just, they wasn't even called out, they were just talking too much. I said, shut the fuck up. Yeah, and exactly. we just carried on playing. Uh, yeah, so yeah. But calling someone out of position, we very rarely get that yeah. because we can trust new people. I mean, there are times where like, for example, Amir will just be capping the enemy's base. I had no idea he went there, <laughs> but that's his job to do that. And he'll he'll cap half their base. Where I think I, I think it was where where did this time did it. On yeah, yeah. He where did it? Yeah. Video, yeah. He also posted I, I, the clip I've, I've about how we did it, yeah. and he actually got the one. I've, I've yeah. got to call it out. He as a hero beat um who was who was it was a Tinja that yeah, has Tinja. a whole unit there. Tinja from the dual blade had a whole unit of on the pike. And lost yeah, to just uh, one pike. Yeah, so I've got to call that out. Fair play. You know that mm -hmm. was a good that was a good play. But that's something that we didn't call out. You know, pike is balanced. Yep. But that's something that wasn't a call to say, oh, yeah, you go cat base. It was, he saw that opportunity. He went there and he you know, performed perfectly with it. And that's a lot more useful than him just staying in the fight that we we're having at the time. Yeah, so exactly. a lot of stuff like that, people just know what they need to do and when they need to do it. Yeah. There will be calls where I say, right, there's Falcos there. Everyone dive those Falcos mm -hmm. and things like that. But at the same time, I would say people are playing less specialist units in the games we've had, at least that I've noticed, mm -hmm. or we've just killed them quick enough that we haven't see much use from it to be fair yeah, i mean exactly. like i say first players did a lot of good with theirs i think it was mask flame from his video he showed had farmed like 150 units or something with his shenjis mm -hmm. with a trev as well but he did a lot of work with them on that map because we just didn't punish it we couldn't yep. get through to it which is yeah, fair, exactly. fair play to them they performed it very well um but yeah yeah i don't necessarily have to call out people's names it's just mm -hmm. i say one thing and a couple people do it if i see too many going i'll pull one back but yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. very rarely happens because the team's just so experienced yeah yeah, that, that comes from experience. And going to that, uh, I want to slightly change the subject here. Um, by the way, for those who aren't watching on YouTube, uh, Dunkle was grinning all the time while Temperature was talking. I love that. Good job. Um, and for those who are... What did I do? Oh, you were grinning. They were smiling all the time. Uh, yeah. when he was saying, talking about <laughs> he, the screams and me. everything. Yeah, yeah. Can you? I mean, just... Yeah, and, and that's the other thing for those who, are, who aren't watching. Um, Big cap. You, you might want to watch it on YouTube because then you can see that Dunkle and Temple Shot are basically like brothers. They look the same almost. They've got the same glasses. It's it's all the same there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure of it. I think um, I've got a better beard though. Yeah, it might be, might be. Yeah, might have to do a beer contest somewhere it's along the lines. Done. Yeah, it's completely fresh. <laughs> it's completely fresh. You need to go to a barber for sure uh, for the bottom. Yeah. Beer. Yeah. All right, uh, but uh, on, uh, on another note, uh, Dunkle, I'd like to learn a little bit more about your role within the team. Can you can you talk to me about it? Um, I'm. The scrim organizer, or like the 
like I'm a strategist and scrim organizer and taking like leading scrims and stuff like that if Temple is not there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm a I'm a exotic player. I'm playing Shenjis in the games. I'm talking as the same as Temple. Like we are both shot calling, but he's the main shot caller in scrims. I'm mainly shot calling because he's never there. Yeah, exactly. Basically, <laughs> hey, come on, I missed like three. <laughs> I'm admittedly the most important scrims, but still. And you most you missed all la last week, and I had to <laughs> shot call all besides. <laughs> I think where Maru had to that's because why you're my trusted well. second in exactly. command. Exactly. That, that, that is how much trust there is in this team, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, like since. But honestly, the, like anyone could shot call if I was. Yeah, there. it's like, not hard. Like everyone is shot calling in general. Mm -hmm. like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, really and that's what I say. Like, the comms are messy because everyone is basically a mini shot caller. Everyone's calling out things. Everyone's saying, you know, we could maybe do this, we could maybe do that. And then it's just mm -hmm. down to, like, generally me or Dunkle to then make that final decision. Yeah, just so, yeah, let's do that. Let's go. So everyone's shot callers are right, really. That's part of why we're such a strong team. We're very communicative. We have a lot of talking going on. Everyone trusts everyone, and we just have that experience, that and that high individual skill level as well. So, yeah, it all adds up to make a very top level team, yeah, as we've shown. Sure. Yeah. Since last season finals against Pontgard, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I'm doing all sign ups, scrims, organizations, and stuff like that. All the votes. And yeah, He's and, my I'm, doing, bitch, is and I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go for him, and, I, and I'm doing mo yeah, and I'm one of five strategists we have or four strategists which are doing strats mm. maps and stuff like that and testing out things yeah that's my job in the team interesting it, it, i didn't know you had like four strategists that's quite a lot actually and uh, is there any maps you specifically really like to to strategize for correct castle i love this map mm, yeah really and that is a fun map. To be, to be Greg, fair, I think... Greg is the all... best tournament map, in my opinion. It's <laughs> just a bit I, I don't know how good it's going to be with Siege involved as well, though. Yeah, but... Because yeah. that's, that's going to well, be in the CBL. That probably be it's in the CBL Asia, potentially. I think they're voting on it at the moment. Mm, uh, but I, I, yeah. to be honest with you, what I like doing on the maps is trying to find strategies that no one else has done mm -hmm. to make it more interesting and to catch people off guard. Yeah. Um, and the sad part is every time we've done that, we've always one of the last ones to play so people scrim us, steal our strats and do it first then everyone thinks they did it first. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> the interesting part, right? Well, yeah, yeah, it's exactly. That would be funny. Maybe it's, I, it's fun um, trying to find new ways right. to attack and defend them out. I'll, in general, I'll try and get you first on the schedule the next season. <laughs> <laughs> in general, my most favorite maps I played in Sea Rivals, I think, are Correct Castle and I think it was Reggie we played. Last season, I'm not sure. No, uh, Reggie Nopla, she didn't play. No, no, no. Mm. Well, it was a different tournament then. Oh, I was with CBL in the finals. It was CBL, oh, okay, yeah, no, yeah. Right. But yeah. I like I liked Reggie as well, but mm -hmm. it's not for C-Rides. But Reggie and Correct Castle are my two favorite maps for tournament-based mm -hmm. games. Reggie is a fun one, yeah. I will admit, that is quite fun for tournaments. Because it can go both ways even, so easily. Yeah. Even we chose uh, Artillery? Yeah, that's interesting to me, actually, as well. But, yeah, Artillery yeah. changed a lot, like, mm -hmm. a really lot. Most like some maps like Harbor City and Walford are completely different for the place. Like in general, like maps with open field and one wall to hold on A, for instance, Walford, Hidden City, where you're more using into like holding the wall with cool and stuff with cannons to destroy the towers. And mm -hmm. Civil Rivals, for instance, you cannot do it in Hidden City, for instance. Some guys, like some teams, I think we did as well, I'm not sure, I forgot. We tried to hold on the wall, some teams mm -hmm. decided to hold on the stairs. And with RT, I think all teams would try to at least delay the towers. Like, it's always a bit different. And yeah, I think it, of course, that well. was with Siege, yeah. I think Hidden City, 100% yeah. error would fall defend the walls, I'm pretty sure. Because mm -hmm. it's just, it's, when you've got the wall positions like that, it's, they're quite easy to hold on the wall if you get Siege up. Especially that map, because there's quite a few spots we can get, mm -hmm. like, hidden Siege that can't be destroyed easily. Yeah. Um, but I, I enjoy the tournament with no Siege. Yeah, Historically, really yes, know. obviously, we do like Siege because we've had these full holds on A's on, on things like Wall Fort, for example, which no one else ever full held mm. on A and we did. Things like that, I, I really enjoy. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, Siege just ruins the game for me. Like, it's just too strong and just, it massively changes the play style. Yeah. You're, um, you're saying Siege, you're talking about artillery, right? Artillery, yeah. Artillery, yeah, 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 okay, just to be sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate towers. <laughs> yeah, no towers for me. Just battering ramps, maybe, and then push through gates, yeah. Um, I really like it. So what I what I found interesting is that um, the, the the thing that you mentioned about the walls is that we've seen more teams actually try to protect A sometimes on on maps. Uh, no beaches did it on Harbor on Harbor City as well this this weekend and very successfully with the militia uh, throwing on the, uh, on the on the on the on the siege towers uh, against Slavs. That was such a fun game to watch. Um, do, why do you think it is that now more and more teams? Because before it was always abandon A completely, go somewhere, go defend somewhere else. But now you see more I, and more teams protecting A as well. I think it depends on the map, but I think it depends on the unit lands, hmm. and it depends on the team you're playing. So historically, like teams like Surf Slayer, for example, they rely heavily on cav normally. 
didn't play much in our game because I think they're expecting us to full hold the wall. Mm -hmm. um, so they weren't playing in camp as much. But if you look at, for example, their um, well, take their Hidden City one, for example, against No Beaches, they had quite a bit of cav. Yep. And so the fact that No Beaches then full held the wall mm -hmm. meant that they couldn't use that cav, so it kind of screwed them. Um, and I think it depends on the map as well, because some maps it takes a long time for Trebs to get to the wall. So again, Harbour City, for example, yeah. takes a long time for the Trebs. You can call them out, you have like 10 seconds to move before it hits. Exactly. Like You have a long time to move. So it makes holding those walls a lot easier, because you can play around the Trebs a lot. Yeah, I, I just to interrupt you there. You should have saw them coming then on Harbour City, maybe against their slayers in the first game. <laughs> just saying. We did have people calling it, <laughs> but that the, when it's on the last point, it's so difficult because you don't see it yeah. comes over the wall. So, exactly. and we expect the trap to be coming, we just couldn't push hard enough in. Just didn't see it coming. Yeah, the defense was just <laughs> fucked up. Like yeah. in the scrims, no, no, like all teams. I think all teams where I was participating mm -hmm. pushed the towers, even mm -hmm. though the ramp was uh, the game was open. At first, there was the first team which I know, uh, who pushed against us on Harbour City Gate, mm -hmm. which kind of fucked us. Yeah, we were really slow with the rotations and stuff yeah. on the wall itself, and therefore we got fucked. Yeah. I, I really I really yeah. do believe that the gate in general is, is something that teams have overlooked too much. I, I hope to see more gate pushes in the next season, because even on maps like Gasso Forge, you can go to a way to the back to the supply. We did try it with Triarchy, didn't execute it well enough, but I mean, there's so many maps yeah, here. you can actually get it. It depends on the map yeah. and the enemy spawns because mm -hmm. especially one like Daswo, like yeah, you can get control of it, but it's also a very small gate. Like people can block that quite easily. Yeah. Whereas if you look at Harbour, for example, it's a much bigger gate you can mm -hmm. get through. So it, it very much depends. And also uh, spawns as well. Like when you're talking about Daswo, you can try and push through the gate to go up to the next point. They spawn on top of that. If yeah, exactly. That's really so shit. It's, yeah. it's very difficult. It depends mm -hmm. on that. But we do like doing gate pushes and catch people off guard because it's just fun and it's different. People don't expect it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it depends on I me. Mean, like I say, we were trying to do a gate push against Surf Slayer. With a few more things involved, which we're not going to go into. Maybe we'll do it next season. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they obviously ruined that by sallying. So. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah, interesting. All right. Um, Corto, anything you would like to talk about then? Uh, no, I think uh, the most important thing is uh, team, team, uh, Temple Shot. It was uh, the stability of the team. Hmm. It was very important. And uh, it's uh, a good part, I think, of the of the good play and the good team play of the team. And uh, to come back on the on the game, on the last game, um, I think the, the first game uh, when uh, Pleb is in defense, it was uh, a, a scholar case. It was uh, everything, it's uh, it's low, it's everything, it's perfect. Uh, everything moves at the, at the right place, at the good moment, and uh, it's, uh, it's really a, right ca a, a scholar case. And uh, we see the square around the, the supply side is uh, the fail of the defense uh, what, uh, they, they, they did. And um, the second game, when play attack and the first player defend, the, the first half of the game is completely crazy. <laughs> uh, in the, all of the match I, I see uh, someday, uh, the all match are very similar. We have maybe maybe one or two two tactics or the, the way to attack and defense, but uh, this one is very original and completely crazy. And uh, but after the, the second part of the game, more 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 classic, and uh, it's okay. But it's good to 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 see some new strategy, new move, and uh, some move like this to original, and uh, it's good for the game, and uh, it's nice for this. Mm -hmm. Good job. Yeah, nice words coming from you, Corto. <laughs> All right, perfect. Yeah, so um, let's talk a little bit about the other divisions as well. Uh, have you even, have you watched any of the other divisions uh, from this weekend? Um, I've seen a few other games that are going, but to be honest with you, I don't have a massive amount of time. So yeah, yeah, I imagine. What other games have done? That's kind I of mean, it. <laughs> if if I don't expect any one team to not watch all the games, it's you guys because you are screaming like crazy and also playing in the front there. We have to talk about it later as well. Um, so. Before we go back to you and talk about Europe as, or like as you the Western region, Europe and NA, of course, uh, as a region compared to the world, because you now face the world together with Kebabs and Jack. Um, uh, I definitely want to talk about that one as well. Uh, but I want to go over the other divisions as well, because the games were really interesting. So um, just for you guys, so you know, um, I'm putting on the screen this little thing that shows uh, a little bit the, the, the plans that we have for next season and i'm gonna have to make sure that it is a bit bigger here so let me just get that right in there there we go top 
bottom. All right, that's perfect. All right, so this is also on CB Rifles rules if you want to look it up later. Um, it's basically the seeding you could save for next season. So what we are going to do is, at least what I'm going to do, is I'm going to create a ch chivalric division. So we're going up another era, you could say, on the Congress Blade ladder. Then we will have the feudal division as the second division, and we will have the rustic division as the uh, third division. So what used to be the plain division will now be a official division. Um, and from there on, we will actually try to create promotion, relegation matches as well. Hopefully, uh, if we have enough time and weeks to spare, because um, on some seasons there is lots of holidays, and then we might not be able to do uh, nine rounds plus another uh, extra playoff uh, season. So it depends on the season, how it looks, and what we got, etc., etc., etc. But mainly, this is the idea. So three divisions, uh, of course, if we have enough teams. Um, but then for the seeding for next season. First six places in the Feudal Division will stay, Rows and Stop Blockers will demote to the um, Rustic Division, or, or should you say Feudal Division. Although um, that is still in a debate with Blay Melias dropping out the fourth place from the Feudal Division. So this means that one team that would go to the second division could actually go up to the first division. Um, and they two teams will most likely have to play a playoff uh, promotion match to, in order to get to the first division, because of, I believe that's most fair in this case. Um, and then the first place, sec second place from the Rustic Division and the third place from the Rustic Division from this season actually go to the first division. The first place from the playing division being Impact also goes to the first division. And then one more team joins, th joins them because Play Melee has dropped out. And then we got uh, the second division with all the Rustic teams, two teams from the Feudal Division, and also the fourth and third and second place from the playing division. And then some teams that uh, might join as well because they are new and then we will have a third division with the other playing teams and everybody else so yeah, that's, that's it it's yeah. really interesting to see how teams perform because obviously we've got it's um what kebabs and um is it yaa for the two that went up from the second division yeah exactly yeah so um yeah good that you mentioned it so the rustic division this season was won the second division was won by kebabs uh yaa and odin's legion taken third second and third respectively um, YA and Odin's Legion tied their match. It was a very interesting match. Definitely rewatch that if you haven't done it yet. Um, so those three teams will be going to the first division for sure. And then Chocolate Paladins is uh, probably going to play Rose in a, a promotion match for that last spot. And in the playing division, it is uh, first place for Impact, second place Argonautas, third place by Elio Old School, fourth place Crypta, who will be going to the second division. And then um, the other teams will be staying in the uh, third division, yeah. Yeah, I think it's definitely more competitive in the first division now next season. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with Kabab's coming in, I mean, just off the top of my head from from looking at those teams, I think the top four next season will be. Obviously, I'm going to say us in first. Um, I'd say it's, I'd say it's going to be a close between Cerslayers and Kabab's in second, and then third, and then probably No Beaches fourth. Uh, all of them will say mm -hmm. that's probably where it's going to. It's going to depend on when you fight when those teams fight each other, who wins basically will decide it. Yeah, so exactly. when Cerslayers fights Kabab's, that's probably going to decide who comes second and third out of that. Mm -hmm. but I'd like to think we can win every week. Obviously, we drew against Cersei's this time, but yep. I still like to think we can 2-0 most people, just of our experience and our strength. But we'll yeah, see how it goes. Map, depends, depends on the new maps, of course, mm -hmm. if there would be new maps. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll also see. We'll, we'll find out. But we will do our best. Anyways. I'm not going to spoil anything about that yet. Yeah. <laughs> it will be Just coming. not Magnolia, please. No, just no, no. No, no capital map for the regular season. <laughs> that, that is something that has to be decided on. Yeah, I yeah. would like to rule, to be honest. I like this map. I played it in Siege. Yeah, the new mm -hmm. tour map's kind of interesting, I'll be honest. It's really cool. The, 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 which one? Played, the? Yeah. The, the new tour map. map the so map. it's now got the breach on the front wall. It's got the Siege Tower for the last point. It massively changes the map. Hmm. So that's, that's an interesting one now. So I, I, if I'm honest, I'd like to see an actual final next season. Yeah, me too. Because I think having it just end with, okay, that's it, you won one, you mm -hmm. went 1-1, one, one, that's over now. I think like the top two from each division at least should have a final, just mm -hmm. to decide it. Yeah. Um, maybe the person that's winning gets like the, the first pick of the map or something like this. Yeah, so exactly. Some way of giving them the, the sort of the, the benefit, I guess, of coming first in the mm -hmm. season. Get some kind of bonus from that. But then, yeah, having a final map would, be, would make it a lot more interesting if we have the time and the space to do it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, definitely. If we have the time and the space to do it, that would be... Totally favorite. Um, and yeah, I agree. I really like the Tour of Arles map. It's just so complex and it has so much in it, uh, potentially, I believe. Um, so we'll see. Like, like on the Gloire from last season was absolutely amazing. Like the, the game between you and Pontgard that was so, so good to watch. It was absolutely top yeah, level. Yeah, as well. Yeah. 
Um, It'll be interesting to see how other teams fare on that map. Yeah, exactly. Uh, talking about, I mean, we're going to do a tier list before the next season for sure later on, but uh, not in this podcast. But um, one team that I do want to. Uh, mention is uh, Pontcourt because they finished se second last season uh, ob obviously had a lot of changes uh, going into the season with a lot of the key players not playing for at least one season um, are they still on your mind somewhere? It, it's, it's it's a very different team like mm -hmm. it's hard to put anything on that like it they well they showed last season how strong they were this season I would say was a very poor effort from them trying to put it nicely mm -hmm. but they did not perform very well this season for, for their sort of legacy so to speak yeah um, it, I think have, not having uh, Payan there massively impacted them mm -hmm. and some of the other experienced players they had as well. Yep. So we'll see what they do next season. You know, maybe they bounce back again. Maybe this is like the wake-up call they need mm -hmm. to bounce back and, and do better, but we'll see. Yeah, it will be very, very interesting. I, I kind of get similar vibes to what happened to um, Surf Slayer actually last season. They also didn't perform yep. very well. Actually, yep. they performed quite badly, I think, if you look at yeah, their... Yeah, they were very underwhelming last yeah, season. Yeah, exactly. And, and they also they took a break in a way. And you could say the same for Pontecourt. They're kind of taking a break, some of the key players at least. So who knows? They might yeah, be coming back very strong that. next season. Yeah. yeah, sometimes they need that break to sort of chill out and just you know mm -hmm. refocus and come back again. And you can see from this season, Surf Slayers came back very strong. Yep. Um, so we'll see if, if Pongard can do something similar next season. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then something else that has changed as well, uh, if we talk about teams from this season and the Sea Rivals and all, is that uh, Blame Elias is uh, going out of this league. Uh, I've mentioned it before. Um, so there will be very inter interesting roster changes during the offseason. I hope we are able to keep track of some of them because there are so many good players in that team. Um, yeah, they've got a lot of good players in that team. Yep. It is a shame to see them go because they were one of the teams that would try more outlandish like strats yeah they are very aggressive um, yeah. like you can see from our harbor city attack we have them. obviously it was unfortunate with the whole reset and everything but um you could see they were they're willing to to take that risk to do mm -hmm. weirder strats let's yeah. should we say or riskier strats which again similar to so with us with how we do things we like to take that risk with it but i think they pushed that boundary further mm -hmm. so it was always interesting to see what they would do in their games um so it's gonna be a shame to see them leave but understandable if their main shot caller can't play next season so mm -hmm. they don't want to ruin their legacy i guess which is fair enough they were yeah. a very strong team yeah absolutely yeah so like i said there's definitely a legacy that goes down with it uh blame Melias being the biggest meme for our for the sea rival season as a team as a whole <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that was really fun we've had lots of fun with them um so i hope they come back somewhere uh, but uh, for sure their place will continue to play um and something else that i mentioned in, in, the, in the chat as well last week on discord was that um, there's an, another interesting storyline here uh, because the fourth place from the f from season zero being Eden uh, this Bennett as well after ended ending fourth place they actually got back um, as no beaches now finishing third beating Blay Melias um, who were third last season and now again the fourth place actually disbands and those players will have to find a new team so if there is a new team next season that actually has most of the players from Blay Melias in it still. And that team becomes third place, and another fourth team actually disbands after after the next season. Then there is definitely a curse on being fourth place. Well, I mean, I mean, the best way it would happen. Well, I say best, that's a bit harsh. But if they, if Blame Elias comes back with a fresh team, mm -hmm. obviously different name, everything finishes third place. No beaches finish fourth. They then uh, break down again. They <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they disband, and then Eden team rebuilds, comes back again. It should be back and forth, and there's two. Yeah, teams exactly. It will be the, too. the eternal <laughs> struggle for. Actually, being able to contest for second and first place, but just not getting there. Because yeah. I mean, you say fourth place, I call it first losers. So yeah, all right, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's all I am. <laughs> all right, good. Yeah, that's just some fun, I guess we have, and yeah, I really enjoy creating stories like this. I mean, it's 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 actually what I believe is so cool about the Sea Rivals as a whole that because of the the league format where you have uh, yeah so many games, but it's it's not a tournament where teams drop out. You create more of a storyline between teams because they play so many games and um, even teams that don't end up first actually get talked about quite a lot, like Blame Alias, like Slot Blockers, like Bondguard, like Bobs, like any team really. Yeah. Try to keep even. Like, like yeah. looking for team as well, actually. They, they mm -hmm. performed yeah. uh, decently in some of their games, which people weren't expecting. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they won more. Yeah, they won way more games than people are expecting. Yeah. <laughs> infinitely more games you could say yeah so it was really yeah. cool um i'm curious if they will continue next season we'll see um yeah all right um on a whole different topic then um 
We're going to close out for sure with uh, like the the Western quality of Conquest Blade right now. Um, but before we go there, uh, I'm very interested in your opinion about um, the stream and the casting for Cyber Rivals League because there's been an interesting discussion going on on the Cyber Rivals Discord. Um, I'm also having some ideas about it. Uh, I want to make some changes for next season uh, in how we like promote and do all of it with the with the streaming and the casting for Cyber Rivals. Um, how, how do you enjoy it? Look at it. Um, I mean, overall, I'd say the casting has been decent for what it is. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of in, people that haven't ever casted games before to having some kind of commentary on the games. Yeah. Um, if I'm being completely brutal and honest about it, I don't think it's as good as it needs to be. I don't think it's where it should be for the weather mm -hmm. state the game is. But it's also difficult because we only have a limited pool of content creators that can stream yeah. the game. So that is limited as well. I mean, I would love to stream or cast some games myself. I'm not a content creator, so I don't have to be allowed. Mm -hmm. but, and I also compete in the game, so... But I think if you look at other games, you normally have a pairing of casters. Mm -hmm. So like you've got with, was it Asterog? And there's two French streamers. Yeah, always Asterog and Arcanope, yeah. Arcanope, Arcanope yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So they, they have that pairing there. I don't know what it's like, obviously, because I don't speak French. Mm -hmm. But you normally have like a comedic caster and a, like an information caster. Exactly. You normally have that balance. You have one that can talk about what's actually happening in the game and all the details and mm -hmm. units and what's happening. And you have another guy that sort of adds that hype to it, adds that bit of, mm -hmm. you know, entertainment to it exactly. and i think that's something we could easily do yeah I believe so as one well. thing i would say is that i'm not trying to be harsh on people but most of the casters we have aren't top level players themselves mm -hmm. so it's difficult for some people to watch those streams yeah. and you know have that engagement with them when they're just sat mm -hmm. there going well you what have you ever done with them yeah and i agree so, and, and i think some of the cast also know it of course i mean some of them even say it on stream i think um like saying that they are not top level players or understand the game very well but um, Don't wrong. They, they that, is, that is, that is totally fine because you can see it for League of Legends there are so many casters that don't even play the game really well but it doesn't matter because they can tell a story they can uh, be very hype about what's going on and then you need someone else beside them that actually knows a lot about the game knows what, what's going on with the meta with the units with the plays and, and it's difficult as well because obviously they're not paid to do it you know mm -hmm. if you look at yeah, other games the they're paid to cast it, so they put yeah. more effort in which is understandable because I mean one of the things that gets me is the, the lack of information some of the casts have on the teams. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm even to, the, even well. to the example of getting people's names wrong, things yeah. like that. Like yeah, exactly. For me, that's something that if I was casting, I'd want to look into. I want to learn more about mm -hmm. the teams. And something that the CBL does, they'll have like a little information sheet they fill in for yep. the CBL for your team. And while it's nothing major, at least it's got some information for the casters to go on. So if there is some mm -hmm. dead time, they can talk about it. As exactly. you saw from the CBL last time with like, for example, Coffee Fuel Gaming, and, and some of the other guys that were casting then, they had this information to go mm -hmm. off. Yeah. Even if they didn't know anything about the team, they say, oh, this team is from EU1, they're players from Origin, exactly. you know, they're mainly German speakers, but they, talk in, they speak in English because they're in an international house. Mm -hmm. Little things like that can massively you know, improve the casting. So yeah, absolutely. I don't know whether we do some kind of information sheet for this could be useful or mm -hmm. just having these casters. I mean, maybe yeah. we can get my games to give the casters some kind of reward for doing it. Exactly. And so then I, then if, it, if, so. if you don't appear, Tom, so I just want to jump in because this is something actually that it's really close to me with i think in a way but so what i know is that corto you've been gathering a lot of information about teams and tournaments and uh, we're sharing it as well i actually tried to create a uh, like a stat street uh, yeah a, a stat document about the teams and everything during the first season but the cast simply don't want or don't have the time to put effort into it and, and keeping up with it because you need someone to keep track of all of it and then, uh, honestly i can't do it right now because it's just so much work already organizing all of the tournaments um i'm trying to keep up with the database of course um we will be getting mvps and for for the most unit kills troop score etc uh somewhere over the next weeks um so that's always something i try to do and that also helps in at least knowing more about the teams and the players um but something that i know or no i was part of when i casted our tournament two with general combo is that general combo and i we actually uh did the questionnaires but i also kept track of all the matches i like the just a few stats like who got the MVP, who got the most unit kills, who got the most hero kills, who died the most, and was there something that stood out in the game that they played, like just a single play or something. And then we always had so much to talk about when there was a matchup, which we could say, oh, this team, uh, this specific player, he's really good, he's carrying the team always. Yeah, like um, keep an eye out for, yeah, for exactly. example, keep an eye out for Amir because he always flanks and does dumb shit exactly. on the face. Like yeah. And then and during I, the game, you, you will yeah, see you will see Amir on the flank and you can say, oh, look at this, we talked about it before and he's probably with this and this unit. and. Stuff like this, yeah. Exactly, it's those that small is, things that will yeah, raise the level. For exactly, and and that is what I believe is actually casting a game. And I feel what, I feel like what you see right now with most casters, um, 
And I, I really believe we should be having this discussion, not to criticize them, but because it's useful feedback that you can use as a caster, well, just exactly. as well, it's, it's just as, well as teams are, are getting feedback from playing scrims, is that right now it feels like most streams are more like commentating on what's happening, but not really casting the game. You like and, it's, and it's the camera control as well. Yeah, and that's hard yeah. if you do it on your own, of um, course. Yeah. But that's where I think you can improve it by having, for example, have the streams going from the CB Rivals channel, mm -hmm. Or from a uh, from a set channel, but have two or three people in there. So one controls the camera, one does mm -hmm. the or comedic chat sort of people hyping it up. One does the in depth explanation of what's happening in the fight, yeah. and sharing that loadout more will make it easier for the streamer because mm -hmm. they're also trying to interact with chat as well. You can't yeah, do that exactly. whilst you're casting, whilst you're moving the camera, whilst you're doing mm -hmm. this. It's too much for one person. Yeah. So if we want to take it to that next level, building up teams of casters rather than having you know five individual people casting the game. Some do it very well. Life mm -hmm. is very good with controlling the camera. Yeah, he's example, extremely good with the camera. I'm he's not like... German, so I don't watch streams. So. Yeah, exactly. If you oh, had him paired up with some others, yeah. it could work quite well. Yeah, true. And that's the other thing. So Life is a really good camera controller. Like if if you if you want to improve your quality, maybe of, of enjoying the games, maybe should you should do Life Hacks camera. Turn off the sound if you don't understand German, and then put someone else's voice that you really like over it, and it's, it it will probably be be better for it. Exactly, and because yeah. and, one of the things I find with going to go camera control, for example, a lot of the streams you'll find they'll just have a static overshot of the fight, and that's it. They won't move the mm -hmm. camera much. They'll just move yeah. it when the team pushes. Whereas for me, I'd want to have where the camera zooms in for the big fights, so you can mm -hmm. see the front line what's happening. Obviously, not too much because you don't want to miss the flanks things as well. Yeah. So it's getting that balance. You need to be changing the camera. Easy. Yeah, you need to get well, overview exactly. when it need, when it's necessary. And you need to be close when the fight actually happens because that's that's when you need to know why is this win team even winning? What key yeah. plays are they you, making? You see it with some casters, not in this tournament, but in other tournaments you've been in, where they're like, oh, mm -hmm. X, X, X team has now won. Let's say, oh, Plebs is massively winning this fight, and then actually they turn out losing it, and yeah. it's like, okay, we well, just called the wrong thing. Yeah, exactly. Because you didn't have a close up view, yeah. you just called it over the top. Yeah, and then I think something that happens a lot is you will see the, the, the heroes alive drop dramatically, like from 15 to 10 in a matter of seconds, and then they say, oh, this team is losing, but then. Those they 10 heroes that are alive way. actually have all their units left and they will wipe the floor with the enemy team and then suddenly they've won the fight or something. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. All right, interesting. Uh, Dunkel, anything for you? And then I'm going to go to Corto because the French actually have a lot of duo casting. Corto, you've been part of it as well, but uh, Dunkel, first to you. Um, anything you, you've specifically mentioned or like noted about the casting and the streaming? Uh, like there was some, let's say, drama with. For example, like the time, like the delay of the um, stream, mm. and sometimes some streamers fucked up because they didn't like remove some things where you can see the like remove the poll, for example, like who is winning. So there was plebs, mm. uh, for instance, some kind of shit, kind of shit like that. I mean, for me, I don't personally care, but some people get really mad, and therefore I think it's like Tempest said, better to have like casting teams so everyone can have a look up, uh, on that. One guy doing camera, one guy commentating, and stuff like that. But in general, I think it was decent this season. Yeah. Nothing much to say. Yeah, of course. And that's the other thing. It's it's really hard if you start casting uh, games. It it always improves slowly, uh, because you like do more of it, of course. Yeah. Uh, Corta, what about you? Um, you and Mr. Nara have been doing a lot of co-casting. You also did the rhetorical. How? What? What do you think about the whole casting and streaming? It's not easy. <laughs> yeah, that's the first good question. It's not easy, and uh, often the the. the... The, the guy to do that is not uh, the professional mm -hmm. so uh, but uh, they need to practice and i think they need to to re to rewatch um, the, the the match they cast you know mm -hmm. to to listen to them and to to see the the their camera their manage management camera and uh yes and many i i always try to ask them to to do some uh some tactical explication mm. with uh, a map uh, a map screen support yeah but uh, then is uh, they need some uh, fans uh, it's imp they need to to have uh, a time to prepare this mm. and uh, it's not always easy for them yeah. but uh, you you propose to to have uh, one channel one cb channel yeah true so it, uh, yeah exactly it, uh, yeah so I, I was ahead of you temple um, I, <laughs> I don't know i don't know it's a good idea because um, yeah the the interest of the interestment mm -hmm. of the, um, to, to to the streamer to come to cast for some match mm -hmm. is to to uh, to have uh, some viewer and uh, to have some uh, some visibility mm -hmm. so uh, it's a it's complicated. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but that's the thing. So you can see that 
Um, CB Rifles is probably right now the biggest content machine for Conquest Blade. Like, it's there's so much that you can do with it. Just as a because it's it's the biggest competition that we have right now for Western Europe and and NA and. Um, you can create so many stuff from it, from the hype videos, the podcast, uh, you can do so much with it. Um, but it also generates so much exposure for any streamer or caster that is interested in growing um, you know, like his reputation. Um, you can you can see what happened with, with the streamers and casters that they've been doing. And they've also been telling me like how good it is for their viewership and everything. Um, and I, act- I really believe that it can only become even bigger uh, because you will reach a bigger audience if you use one channel compared to 10 different content creator doing it one by one. Um, yes. It will just feel relative, very divided. The quality will be lower. Um, but if you actually manage to get it, all of it in one channel, even if those casters and streamers don't get the, all of the viewers for that specific day, being the, that one Sunday in the week, um, they will be getting a lot of exposure and they will be, um, yeah, probably they should be getting more viewers during the, the rest of the week and the year. Um, and I think that is where their benefit should come from because um, there is no way that you get to like massively grow this league by continuing it like this with all the individual casters doing it on their own channel. Yeah, but, it needs to be centralized, yeah. whether that's you know multiple channels of different languages or, mm-hmm. or however it's going to be. But I think it does need to be centralized. But I think that could be better than marketing around the casters. So, you know, mm-hmm. promote their channels during the stream when you're between games, that kind of thing. Yeah. Or whether my games will support giving them some kind of reward for being in the cast, you know, whether mm-hmm. that's in game prizes, which cost them fucking nothing, yeah. or whether that's even, you know, a small fee that they pay out to them for doing it. Because yeah. my games will get a lot of money from this anyway coming in because people watching this and wanting to play more on it wanting to be part of the team so yeah exactly that, that's... That, that takes me on to the, the prizes as well mm-hmm. which i think we need to yeah sort out yeah go ahead yeah. <laughs> um, i mean when you look at it realistically for this league how long it runs and how much work you put into it the prizes mm-hmm. are garbage like it's nothing against yeah. you guys because you've done what you can with my game um like the prizes are garbage you think what two thousand three hundred sovereigns for the winner Bearing in mind there's, you know, weekly 8v8 tournaments yeah, you can exactly. get 500 sovereigns from and things like that a week um, or every two weeks in some mm-hmm. cases. Or, you know, there's other tournaments they've had. And the fact they only do for 15 main players and then five reserves is just ridiculous. We had this argument with them. I think it was in the last CBL that we played mm-hmm. where they tried to do the same thing. And we all kicked off about it as team captains. And they changed it to having the same prizes for all 20, which is something you should do. You know, I can't mm-hmm. realistically go to my team and say, you know, sorry, guys, we've only got 20 prizes. So... I just can only give I, five of you. I've got to just give crap to. Mm-hmm. Last season, I paid out of my own pocket and bought them the sovereigns they would have had if they were in the main <laughs> 15. So I made sure that everyone had that reward. Not every team can do that. Yep. You know, and I, I shouldn't have to do it either. Yep. You know, we should be rewarding people for putting in the effort that they put into these games because I would say, yes, I can't have everyone playing every game, but all of my team turn up to every scrim or at least the majority of them. Mm-hmm. They're there for the games. And then I can't, I, I don't, obviously don't have them play because they're, you know, I have them as reserves out. But everyone puts in the same amount of effort into this and everyone else. Yeah, Why exactly. should five of them get less rewards than the others? Mm-hmm. Obviously, then you have some teams that have 25, 30 people, and that's a bit more extreme. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that can be set up from the start. You say, look, there are 20 people who get full rewards. After that, if you want to put more people in, that's your choice. But you will then have to decide at the end who gets mm-hmm. rewards. Yep. That is something that's reasonable, which I think you've been very reasonable for the whole thing. You're trying to be as fair as you can across the board. Yeah. But the prizes as they are. And I don't think we had it confirmed, but is it the top three from each uh, league get the same points that's kind of retarded as well like, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. nice that they get those prizes but mm-hmm. why should the, the first place team in the most competitive bracket get the same prizes as you know the first place team in the third yeah, exactly but yeah I, I totally agree with you I, I mean so I'll, like, yeah I, I don't care about the prizes myself personally it mm-hmm. makes a difference to me. you know prize yeah. prize I'm here for the glory but it's, it's just exactly. the principle of it you know yeah. Why yeah, should people ex- put all this effort to get the same points? We could just, you know, we could just lose next season, go mm. down to the next bracket, play the same there, win easily, get the same amount of points. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but then the exactly, yeah, you make very fair arguments, and I agree with most of it. Then, um, if you play this league or this competition for the prices, you're you're doing it wrong. I mean, yeah. it's it's <laughs> this is not what makes you rich. Um, even being a caster or a tournament organizer, be myself. Um, we're not getting paid for this, uh, not in a massive way, and I, I, I hope we do. But what, maybe we can actually make something out of it at one point. I mean, I put in two two days a week most of the weeks uh, for the past season, so that's quite a little bit of time uh, that you put in there. But um, yeah, the prices are not where 
they should be for sure. Um, we've been fighting really hard, which is our main priority to actually get some kind of prize for every player that plays in the tournament because um, I think that's also really fair, uh, at least to have like a participation award in a way. But yeah, the prizes are not where they should be probably right now. And um, yeah, I hope that my games actually also watch this podcast, listen to it. Um, but we are talking to them quite a bit. And the reach out to Drew. Drew, yeah. if you're listening, please give us better <laughs> rewards and 20 rewards for the Cash. team, not just 15. Yeah, give and just the let's, let's go like the Asian CBL. Asian yeah. CBL, they get 10k, do- like $10,000 for their winning team. Mm-hmm. Let's just have some that over here as well. <laughs> yeah, maybe start with something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so maybe the frontier will slowly come over here and actually help. Oh, well, we're slowly merging, right? You know, yeah. we've had all like the yeah, yeah exactly. Lot, we've had all that stuff. So maybe next is real cash prizes for tournaments. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? We we, we might be getting it all. Yeah. I think you can explain that for the cash prize only with the when the the international server uh, will be operational. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can see f- some fight uh, against uh, um, a frontier team. Mm-hmm. And, uh, maybe with uh, at this moment you, you can think too about the, the cash price. Yeah. But that's with my yeah. game. It's, it's gonna be <laughs> difficult because no matter how they do it, there's gonna be ping issues or lag issues. So the yeah. only the only fair way it would ever happen is they ha- ever had like an on-stage tournament. Yeah. That's never gonna happen for this game. It's not big enough for that to happen. Yeah, exactly. It's it, not maybe big... they fly like us and Surf Slayers out to <laughs> oh, I would love stage. it. Oh, yeah, that amazing. would be so insane. I don't think it? it's gonna happen though. I, I don't know if you've listened to some of the first podcasts I did, but that was like my statement dream that I made at the start of the, the whole Cyber Rifles, like saying that yeah. the dream is to one day play perhaps in like some things on, on some stage with 15 v 15. Like how crazy is that? It's 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 basically like the oh. biggest the biggest game. Imagine just in, in like some world. stadium in Europe somewhere, yeah. like we just all meet there and play on stage. Yeah. And then, like 10 people in the crowd watching. Yeah. And then <laughs> the absolute best thing would be to get the map, like the actual game as a hologram somewhere in the stadium or something. That, uh, like, my God, that would be it's absolutely crazy. amazing. Yeah. Realistically, that's never going to happen. Yeah. But in yeah, but... our dreams, that would be amazing. Exactly. Right? There's no way, not even in 10 years, even if the game is still alive, it will never fucking happen. Never. Im- imagine going from... 2,300 sovereigns prize rewards to a stadium game with 30 players <laughs> in a year. No, it's, it's not going to happen there it's so far quickly. Yeah. Never but what maybe, can maybe dream. the game explodes next year and we have 100,000 people playing. You know, exactly, knows? exactly. <laughs> Tell your friends, your sisters, your family, your nephews. Maybe, uh, maybe they'll just pay for your one neighbor to play it and yeah, exactly. then everyone's going to play it then. Exactly. Because that's the thing, it is such a unique game. It's just not helped by certain historic things with my game. Mm-hmm. you saying. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to talk badly about them, but you know they, that that has been, I think, what has held it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's Different there's been things not handled well. It's been improving a lot. I gotta say, I gotta admit. Oh, definitely, um, definitely has been improving. I, 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 yeah, Corto and I can tell that things are improving, improving massively. We're working together with them um, more and more. But uh, yeah, stuff needs to improve. All right, we're also awesome with this. Uh, thank you for making the point about prices and all of that. That's going behind the scenes as well. Um, Last thing that I want to talk to you about is actually um, the state of Europe. We've hit on it a little bit, um, and your games in Frontier. How do you feel about the level? And Duncan, I want to start with you about the level of Europe and NA compared to the Frontier um, as a whole. Uh, it's hard to compare. It is really hard to compare, probably. You mean like the comparison of like the players or like the play, like the how yeah. you play the game? Or... Yeah. So no, yeah. So all of it honestly so like the teams how do they fare up i mean you guys are doing really well kebabs are doing really well jack also did quite well um so there's definitely a like a good competition but yeah so the teams how do we compare them and then also the gameplay yeah i think like uh, from the unit comes like from the unit selections uh, it's not that much different like the Mm -hmm. only like when we first scrimmed asian teams um like frontier uh, teams which are playing in this tournament, like there was basically from the strats, everything was the same, like holding A, holding them in the tower, destroying towers, and after it, holding on the stairs, attacking the same, like put RT and stuff, this is the same. Um, but like some units, like pref- prefecture pikes, we didn't even think about, like didn't use them properly, and mm-hmm. they were like, yeah fucking god like with them like they <laughs> fucked us they, one imp uh, one pref pack charge killed temple flynn and me i think in one game and we completely fucked up like <laughs> they are playing smart like really smart they're playing really well but like unit composition like banner guards pref pikes and stuff like that this mm-hmm. is really amazing 
And for instance, when we play scrimmed against them on Sun City, they have legit for every single angle where you can hide your unit, they have a mortar prepared, they have a ballista prepared, they have <laughs> artillery for every single angle. Like they're screaming like three or four times a day, I mm -hmm. hear it. At least, maybe more. And mm -hmm. like they're way more tryhard, way more competitive, and way better. Like way better. I don't want to say like skill wise, I don't really know because um, so, like I heard that Asian team, like in general in Frontier, the heat, like in big pushes and tournament pushes and TW as well, they are like playing behind their units and not with their units. Hmm. I don't know, like it's completely fucked us because we're always like, I was always trying to jump like on exotic units like mm -hmm. Coconuts or Shenjis and they have like 15 heroes immediately jumping on me. They have <laughs> their units fighting in the front, hero stays in the back. And I talked with some Frontier players and they said the same. Like I don't know, the mm -hmm. playstyle play is a bit mm -hmm. uh, different, different, like in the push, how they're playing. Uh, but the strats in general, how they're def playing on different maps, like in City, Sun City, is is the same. Like strategies are the same, but the way they are fighting and how they're using their heroes, and of course the hero classes is basically full pike, um, pike musket and spear. Mm -hmm. What I saw, and some malls, I think zero short swords, zero polexes. I didn't see. <laughs> that is a massive change else. then. Yeah. Yeah, like the hero classes are completely different. Mm -hmm. um, strategies is the same. RT usage is way better and way like way more organized and the way they are fighting in big pushes uh, is slightly different as well mm. and yeah we got fucked by them in scrims yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you did manage to get top four at least and go to the next place yeah so. like we had a pretty like when we mm. talked to some um frontier guys like some scrim organizer he said we have we were really fucking lucky with the um bracket we were mm. really really lucky right and it was i think two of the four teams forfeited the other two were pretty easy i mean was pretty, yeah i think we had a very very easy yeah. bracket. Mm -hmm. I was we really lucky. Kebabs and Jack on the other side, unlucky. They had way like stronger enemies. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we didn't really focus and try for the CBL that much, especially because we only have 20 guys in our team. And the times we're always screaming like on um, 1 1 p.m., 2 p.m. on some like so time like that. Night. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, no, no, mm -hmm. p.m. Oh, p.m. Yeah. Oh, so middle of the like day. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the middle of the mm -hmm. day. So in the week, like work. when yeah, times aren't great. Yeah. I had we have it. teams coming to us being like, yeah, can we scrim tomorrow? We're like, yeah, sure, what time? And it's like 2 p.m. our time. We're like, mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and therefore, it's really hard to organize the scrims. Like, we only have 20 guys in our mm -hmm. team. And that we had many scrims against Asian teams, against kebabs, for instance, as well. Mm -hmm. We just didn't hit the numbers because of either the time or, or because we are 20. Mm -hmm. like, uh, only 20 guys in the team it's really difficult to organize scrims and play the actual games and, and you can't take subs in either because you're playing on the official tournament yeah. server so it's not like you can just go oh mm -hmm. someone else could jump in and cover them no yeah, it has to be one of your red team so yeah. like we've scrimmed a lot of the top team well we scrimmed the two best teams over there quite a few times uh, and the first couple of games i think the first game we played was probably the best one because i think they just weren't expecting our play style and, and so we, won. I think we won oh, well. one yeah, game good. out of the two didn't we but then mm -hmm. like almost every game after that they beat us like it's on an individual skill level, I'd say that I don't really notice any difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's just a very different way that they play. Like Jungle said, they play behind the units more. They play a lot of high damage heroes. So they just their main focus is they'll just go with like two of your heroes. They'll find one of you out of position. They'll just instantly one shot you, and then you're down a person. <laughs> and and just their play style is just so, so aggressive. But at the same time, it's kind of similar to ours. Like the, the unit setups and everything. I mean, we did have to tweak it slightly because they play quite. They don't play as unit as leadership efficient. For example, like. For example, the last CBL, we had one of the more efficient strategies was we'd have a lot of people on triple tier four. Mm -hmm. You could fit it in just for seven leadership. Slightly weaker, but you'd have three decent pushes and we'd won a lot of our fights from that. Yeah. The Asian teams have no one on triple tier four. They will have like one golden, so one tier five, one tier four, one tier three, like setups like that. Like they'll they'll have the, the weirdest stuff because mm -hmm. it works for them. But mm -hmm. I'm saying they have a lot of like prev pikes, they were just charging down towers, things like that, just delay you because they can trade one for one with most units because they'll die for it but they have the high enough damage they can kill reapers they can kill yeah, bears, exactly. they can kill heroes especially with the lag as well which does unfortunately <laughs> have a massive impact yeah. mm. it's why i stopped playing longsword so much on this server and i've actually gone to musket now because it's just stronger for the unit counter because i would be with my shields on the front line i'd see reapers charging i'd roll back twice on their screen i'm still standing in front of my shield so i got one shot by the reapers when i'm on my screen i'm like 20 feet behind them oh, well, to the yeah. side of the bloody map so it's things like that it does have a massive impact and change the way we play. Mm -hmm. I'd say we adjusted to it quite well, but it's just, yeah, it's it's very different playing with Siege when all of the fan made tournaments over here are no Siege. Mm -hmm. So getting used to playing that again is a big difference for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. We, we have performed well in it. So, mm -hmm. but like Dunga said, we had a very easy bracket. We had two 
easy teams. It was just a walkover, really, and two teams mm-hmm. then forfeited and dropped out of the tournament. So yeah. we have we we are well aware that we got very lucky getting through as easily as we did to the top sixteen. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas kebabs got knocked out because they had, they I think they drew for third, no, drew for fourth place in yeah, their exactly. um, bracket, and then had to play some like uh, playing games then to get in, and they unfortunately mm-hmm. lost that. Yeah. So we, we're well aware of the situation we're in, but yeah, we're, it's exciting to be there and, and try out some different stuff. Yeah, exactly. So when do the games continue for Frontier? And where to watch? Do, is there we somewhere to watch? Um, so we don't actually know when the next stage is starting yet. <laughs> so they've just they've just done the announcement recently, and they've we've had a vote to like vote another map into the pool because the map pool was awful. Huh. The map pool was Sun City, um, what was it Sun City, Hidden City, Riverlands, and Oof. something else. Mm. And one more, but. I think it was a capital map, wasn't it? Wasn't it Algolia or something? Algolia, I think. Yeah. 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 And so they, <laughs> yeah, they put in a book because everyone was just saying how awful the map pool was. Yeah. And they were saying they were going to change it for top 16. But now what they've done is they've allowed us to vote a map in. So unfortunately, the vote that went through with Wallfort, which is, isn't bad for us because it's like our home map. But at the same time, it's kind of boring playing the same map in all these tournaments. Yeah, exactly. It's always Wallfort, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right, right. And to come uh, back funny to enough, the. Funny enough, was the second choice, but didn't get enough votes, unfortunately. Yeah. Junko, go ahead. Yeah. And to come back to the like the hero classes, like we realized, and Java explained it a little bit slightly to us, like when they're playing all medium armor, like 90 or 80 percent of the team are medium mm-hmm. armor, one dual blade, maybe a short bow, that's it, or a longbow, uh, but most of them are medium armor, and their tactic is to play armor and toughness on those, and therefore they have because on the CBS server, the, like the armor for heavy armor is completely dog shit, like you, mm. yeah, I don't know playing short sword mall and um, Polex for instance is not like rewarding you because like spear pike are as tanky as you if you're skilled on armor on mm. medium um, uh, on armor on, t- on toughness uh, toughness uh, on medium armor therefore like we are just getting raped by the medium armor mm. because especially our team and with the ch- uh, changes we are going to make we have a really heavy armor setup mm. uh, what classes are going to and a bit unlucky and also for the ping some units are legit unplayable for instance, Forte, completely mm. garbage unit. Yeah. Calafrex are just charging through. Forte <laughs> are not holding him, especially with no Doctrines, which is a big... That's insane. Or, or how would you start against a better option then? They, like, I kind of I, think they were, I, especially I with the buff they, they did. You know but, how to play them, yes. Yeah, but so without a Doctrine, without, without Doctrines and with this high mm. ping, it's really hard to play anti kev besides Modo. Modo yeah, exactly. is the best unit to play. It's a Reaper as well, Zia does as well. Like, like fucking... T5 is the mm. way actually because it's you know play T5, yeah and people like uh, people like, like we have our three <laughs> old man players mainly Boomin, Slide and Yavamul and those three cannot play old man because on like with this high ping and old men are re- uh, we really have to micromanage yeah, and you I cannot do it with this ping they have, we had to delete this unit completely so mm. out of yeah. our comp and, and this as well like Flames and, and Zykalian Militia, we can't play a lot of that because mm. that will literally lag you out of the game. Like, <laughs> yeah. you will go up to like 2000 ping or something when the Flames yes, are well. oh, I played wow. Shenzhen, yeah, suddenly I, I don't know, no units were moving. I didn't see any uh, any any fucking shit. I throw my Shenzhen into a big push, <laughs> bam, nothing to see. Yeah, exactly. It's completely garbage. This is really a. Have you tried the Alchemist then? Us. Because the Alchemist already calls another oh. backpipe. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. All right, all right. Let's not go there. But okay, um, it it is time to wrap up the the podcast. We've been talking about so many things. I absolutely love it. It's always been a pleasure to have you, Temple Shot, and now Demko Almeida to invite you every time as well. Um, so it's great <laughs> to have you guys. The test, then. Yeah, you passed the test <laughs> by, by by so many points now. Yeah, um, Corto, um Before I give these guys uh, the, their last say in this podcast, uh, anything from you? No, from, from here, you, you say a lot of things, but I don't understand everything. That's good. We, <laughs> we'll, we will get a French translation uh, written at the bottom uh, somewhere. Yeah. No problem. I just want one precision uh, for mm-hmm. Temple. Uh, on the last CBL, after you play a match against Frontier, uh, a team uh, against a Frontier team, or not? Yeah. yeah. What was that, sir? You, uh, after the last CBL. Uh, the, the the top team play against uh, a oh yeah um, so that, that never happened no, they, no. Never. Mm. They, okay. they kept trying to organize it and it was kept being spoken about but it, it never actually happened what, um, like I think the... in the end it was going to be like uh, just a uh, just a fake match basically I think it was going to be all blue units or some rubbish like that like they did before oh, okay. it mm. wasn't going to be it was going to be like a show match basically not an actual tournament format but it just, it just never happened they kept delaying it and delaying it and then they, they just stopped responding after that so yeah that's too bad. All right. Uh, then, Corto, I have a question for you. Um, is there anything you could share about the core tournament? 
Uh, for about the for card tournaments, I think uh, we can hope to have uh, an edition in the next season, in the uh, 13th season. And uh, so it will be in a parallel of the uh, CBR rival, or CB rival. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think in, uh, in the next month, uh, uh, I improve, I, I make a, um, a mise à jour. Uh, an announcement? Yeah. What? An announcement? Uh, yes, an announcement, and yeah. I, I make a, a Discord of court tournament. Mm -hmm. um, actually, actually, it. Mm, nice. And, uh, mm, so stay, stay away. Yeah, stay tuned, guys. <laughs> court tournament is coming up. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Can't wait. All right, perfect. Yeah, that's going to be so good. Um, we've talked about it before, but the court tournament should be like the Champions League, if you know soccer, uh, the Champions League to the Super Rivals. That that is generally the idea, and then CBL would be the champ, the like World Championship for our part of the game. All right, anyway. Um, Dunkel, Tempershot, last words from you to round up this podcast. Did you well played to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose, yeah, GG well played and fuck Dada. There we go. That's a good way to end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. We'll leave it there then, guys. Um, it is Plebs, your se season one champions for CB Rivals after taking the season Ooh. zero as well. <laughs> After taking the court tournament, and they've beaten Surf Slayer, the CBL current CBL champion, still, uh, who have beaten Plebs in the CBL final uh, a few months ago. So, season one has been amazing. Thank you all. Thanks to all of you, the players, the casters, the moderators, especially as well. Those guys are doing so much work there. Uh, thank you, Corto, for co hosting this podcast with me just as well. And also, thank you to all the patrons, three patrons actually, that are supporting me uh, monthly. This allows me to at least make it somewhat of a discussion with my girlfriend when I spent so many more hours at the evening doing all of this. Um, so if you are actually able to spend some money on me, uh, please go to the Patreon page. It really helps uh, a lot. Just, uh, organizing, yeah, of course. That. Thanks, yeah. for yeah, thanks for the work you're putting, guys. It's much appreciated. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a blast. So uh, let's continue this. Um, CB Rifles will continue just as well, like Corto said, on the season 13, um, which is probably going to start in September. So if you have a team and you want to register, go to the CB Rifles Discord team registration and you can put your team in there if you're looking for a team go to the looking for team channel uh, there's plenty of players there to pick up if you want to make some roster changes that's it for us guys um have a good night enjoy the weeks off um and for you guys uh enjoy the frontier games i'm going to watch it once they're live thank you thanks for having us All take right. care guys see you guys <laughs> yep. i want to taste the pain i think i'm seeing all red two bullets in the gun one shot to the head i need a play